In the creaky old mansion at the end of Whisper Lane lived Henry, the most unusual ghost anyone had ever met. While other ghosts delighted in shouting boo and rattling chains, Henry preferred to smile and wave at visitors. This, as you might imagine, wasn't very ghost-like behavior at all. Every night at the Ghost Academy, Henry struggled with his spooking lessons. When asked to practice his scary faces, he would accidentally make silly ones that made other ghost students giggle. His attempts at haunting howls sounded more like cheerful singing, and his chains jingled merrily instead of rattling ominously. Oh dear, sighed Mrs. Spookworth, the ghost teacher. Henry, ghosts are supposed to be scary. What are we going to do with you? Henry floated home each night, feeling more and more out of place. He watched as other ghosts successfully frightened people and earned their haunting licenses, while he couldn't even manage to make a spider nervous. One particularly gloomy evening, Henry discovered a little girl named Lucy hiding in the mansion's library. She had gotten lost during a storm and sought shelter in the old house. Instead of trying to scare her, Henry grabbed a storybook and began reading to her until the storm passed. To his surprise, Lucy wasn't frightened at all. You're different from what I expected a ghost to be, she said, smiling. You're kind. This gave Henry an idea. Instead of trying to be scary, he decided to be himself. He transformed his part of the mansion into a welcoming space. He arranged ghostly tea parties, organized floating book clubs, and even started a spectral gardening group where transparent flowers bloomed in moonlight. At first, the other ghosts thought he was strange, but gradually, they noticed something remarkable. While they struggled to find purpose in their afterlife of scaring people, Henry was having fun and making friends, both ghost and human alike. Children started visiting the mansion to hear Henry tell stories. He used his ability to float to help elderly neighbors reach high shelves, and his transparent nature made him excellent at finding lost items. His gentle glow provided comfort to those afraid of the dark. Word spread about the friendly ghost in the old mansion. Soon, even the strictest ghost elders had to admit that Henry had discovered a new way of being a ghost. He proved that not all ghosts needed to be scary to be special. Mrs. Spookworth visited one day and found Henry teaching young ghosts how to make heart-shaped smoke signals. You've created something wonderful here, she admitted. Perhaps it's time we updated our ghost curriculum. Henry was awarded a special Spirit of Friendship certificate, the first of its kind in ghost history. His success showed that being different wasn't a weakness. It was his greatest strength. The old mansion became known as the happiest haunted house in town. Visitors would leave with smiles instead of screams, often returning to participate in Henry's various ghostly activities. He had created a place where the living and the spiritual could share joy and friendship. Years later, when new ghosts would arrive feeling uncertain about their spooking abilities, they would be told about Henry, who turned his inability to scare into an ability to care. He showed that there's more than one way to be a ghost, and that being true to yourself is the greatest success of all. As Henry floated through his beloved mansion, surrounded by friends both solid and transparent, he knew he had found his true calling. He wasn't a failed ghost. He was simply a different kind of spirit, one who brought light to the afterlife and warmth to the world of the living. 